football bag. We mentioned the COVID-19 issues plaguing college football right now. Texas A&M paused all football activities on Monday. They went virtual from their facility as uh, nobody was in the building. Auburn and Mississippi State has been postponed. That coming from the league office and LSU and Alabama seem to be hanging in the balance after yesterday's update from Coach Ed Ogeron. Coach O will be here in 12 minutes, just like he is every Tuesday morning. We'll ask him if there's anything new to report on the uh, on the COVID-19 update that he uh, he gave yesterday to uh, to the public through his uh, through his weekly press conference. But it does not seem like LSU is trending in the right direction as far as the numbers are concerned to play this game on Saturday. Um, Brody Miller over at the Athletic is reporting uh, that LSU is down to one quarterback uh, and is uh, playing right, with zero chill, chill. zero tight ends. Um, uh, an overrated position to begin with, and some numbers in the uh, on the lines of scrimmage uh, that are uh, that are thinning out specifically on the offensive line. I mean, as if the offensive line wasn't already thin enough. Uh, but per the COVID rules, you it's like an NFL roster. You only need seven. Uh, you need, I, I think it's seven linemen, one tight end. I want to say you're supposed to have two quarterbacks. Uh, do we even know if they're hitting the base 53 number, though? I, I mean, think about LSU only has like 60-something scholarship players to begin with now, which is crazy in its own right. And so it wouldn't take much to push them under that threshold. Yeah, that's the number that everybody's looking at is the 53. Um, if LSU is going to fall under that number because they were so close when their when their roster was intact, I mean, like yeah. when they were they they were fully healthy, they were still they were still hovering around a number like sixty eight, sixty nine, where it was still just I mean that is scary low numbers when you talk about trying to put a team together and go out every Saturday and compete in the SEC. When you get below the number uh, fifty three, um, the, the SEC has come out and mandated that 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 just can't. Uh, that that's not that's not enough players to 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 compete. In well, a game. unless the Masters are. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, let's be honest. Uh, these were all more guidelines and hard and fast rules anyway. So put a lot of marketing into this idea of Masters straight into Natty. You know, defending champion against the number one team. So if we could make this game happen, but look, I, I'm being a little flippant about the entire thing, but that is kind of there's the rub, right? Uh, as an LSU fan, okay, just from an LSU fan perspective, as someone who enjoys watching that football team, um, I do not want them to play this game. I do not need, it does nothing, it improves nothing in my life to go watch them uh, get their ass kicked by Alabama on Saturday. Is it, is is my uh, take there very Mike Florio and Chris Sims-like? Yes, it's an incredibly soft take, but it is what it is now. That's just like a fan on the field, you know, not wanting to watch my team uh, just get shellocked by their their main rival. Uh, I think the other very like more real part of this is there are major financial implications for a lot of different people, right? Uh, for the league as a whole, obviously, with the big CBS game, kind of how they position this entire schedule um, for LSU, who is obviously in need of all the revenue and money they could get. And then even just look at local businesses, right? And what an LSU game day means to them. And even in a game like Alabama where, yeah, you're probably going to, uh, I mean, there's a chance you're not in it really by the second half, uh, but but it doesn't matter. People will still go out. They'll still, they might be even more willing to go out to restaurants and whatnot because they need some way of kind of making the game more palatable. So it's, it, it's, it, it's a pretty nuanced issue. Jordy, and for what it's worth, like I said, just pure football, pure fan perspective. I don't need to watch that on Saturday. I don't need them to play, but I definitely understand that there are many who it has much more real implications for that would like to see them find a way to get this game played. But I just, I mean, what is the way? Like, if they don't have the numbers, they don't have the numbers. Or are you going to make them run out there with just TJ Finley available? And then, like I said, essentially, John Trey Kirkland would be, I'm, I'm guessing, right? That's just me guessing. It would be John Trey Kirkland would be your quarterback. You're your backup quarterback. They'd or, have to be really creative. And I think that, that, that it, is, it is pretty peculiar that, that the only game um, that the league has, has not made a call on is this LSU-Alabama game when it seems like from LSU standpoint, or at least from the head coach's press conference yesterday, that they, they don't have the numbers or they, they, are, they are getting extremely close to to having to pull the plug 
on this thing, but I think that there was a lot of TV executives. There's a lot of money on the line. There's a lot of uh, implications of this game that affect not only LSU and Alabama and what happens on the field. I mean, a lot of this, uh, you know, will affect the bottom line of the conference. That number, that 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 check that they hand out to all 14 institutions at you know the end of the fiscal year. Um, all of this is in the pot. All this money. The advertising that you sell for Saturday's game, which I imagine is a pretty premium dollar, even though LSU is down, you still can guarantee eyeballs coming out of Butler's cabin in Augusta, Georgia, and throwing the game to, 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 to Death Valley, where the defending national champ is hosting the number one team in the country. And year in, year out, this, this always has you know, top interest, top billing, as, as far as intrigue goes within college football community, within the college football community. So um, I, I will tell you this that the, 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 the business implications, um, the, the tickets available that we heard Verge Osbury speak to yesterday morning when he was here on, on, on off the bench, um, the feeling around Baton Rouge is that nobody wants this game to be played. You know, nobody wants it to be played from a sense of they, 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 they would rather uh, spare themselves the embarrassment it feels like you saying around the people around the program. No, just around the town. Oh, just around the town. Sorry, yeah, it's yeah just around, just around just yeah. around the city. Yeah, um, I I mean that's that that's where I'm at, and I'm I'm in that group. And, and the tickets available. I mean, really and truly, I, I would say that they would be lucky to get ten thousand in this game on Saturday. Yeah, you said that the other day. I didn't realize that it maybe had been so low to begin with this this season, though, right? I mean, uh, what was the actual count? On the other home games, the average of the other home games have been eleven thousand actual. Mm. You know, so I mean, it's, it, it's, I, I don't know what Saturday would look like. Um, I, I, I think if we're just talking on Tuesday morning at at seven twenty five a.m., I would be surprised if they play this game on Saturday. Landwai Insurance brings you off the bench daily here. L a n o i x agency dot com seven four nine five six four zero. Remember, you can get in touch with the Lanois about your auto, home, business, and flood insurance. First-hand testimonies coming from the OTB crew. They handle all of our insurance, and they are the best. We tell you every day, man, they're not really our insurance agents. They're our friends first. L-A-N-O-I-X agency.com is where you find them online or dial them up at 749-5640. Nick Saban was speaking yesterday, and uh, Musso was cutting up this sound and, and just time stamping it. It seems like Ogeron and Saban's press conference were happening simultaneously Saban wasn't asked on the status of this game Saturday and LSU dealing with the COVID issues. His was more about the game in general. Here he is talking about the matchup between the Tigers and the Tide, the 2020 edition. You know, this is often a big game for us. LSU game is always a big game. It's turned into kind of a rivalry game uh, because of the success of the two programs. And uh, I don't think this year is really any different, regardless of record. Uh, LSU has a lot of really, really good players. They have a lot of talent on their team. And, you know, these guys are very capable of being one of the best teams in the country uh, because of the talent that they have. And I think our players really need to respect that and make sure that we go into this game paying great attention to detail in terms of playing with more discipline uh, and being able to execute uh, the way we need to execute to play against uh, these kinds of football players. We mentioned that The Athletic was reporting that LSU was down to zero tight ends, no tight ends available for this weekend's game. Saban yesterday was talking about the, uh, the stellar freshman for LSU, Eric Gilbert, Eric Gilbert. When you have really good skill players outside and you have a really good tight end, it's almost like you're defending four wide receivers all the time. Uh, and I think that's probably the case, you know, with, with LSU and the players they have because they have really good players and, you know, they flex him out a lot and, uh, he's very capable as a receiver, but he's also very capable as a blocker when they keep him in the core. Uh, so this this creates significant issues in terms of matchups, I think, when uh, you have this kind of tight end that can be vertical down the field. He's a really good receiver, uh, but he's also a very good blocker. One more from Saban talking about Baton Rouge's own Dylan Moses, who uh, spiked the hearts of LSU fans four years ago when he chose Bama over LSU. Here is... Uh, Moses, his current head coach, talking about his progression. I think Dylan has played better and better as the season has gone along. Uh, I think, you know, he probably had to get his sea legs back under him uh, early in the season after missing one entire year of football. But I think he's much more confident now. I think he feels, you know, better about the 
the role that he's in in terms of assuming command and leadership and making calls and trying to help other players play better. Um, so I'm very pleased with the way he's progressed throughout the year. An update from LSU football next. Their head coach, Ed Ogeron, on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Kalata and Tebow.